Well, it says I'm live. I hope I'm live. You are live now. Awesome. Yes, we're here. I um, hope I'm in the right place. I could probably stand to check that, don't you think? Let's see if I'm on my Facebook page or in a private group that I don't know why it's set up there. It was told by accident. But it says I'm live. And I think I'm on my page. So, yay. Welcome. That's exciting <laughs> for me. So come over. Come over to my page if you're looking for me. Madeline Kennedy on Facebook. Uh, hi, Diane. Yes. I'm so glad you can see me. And Debbie. Good, 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 good. Y'all are here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I decided to do it this way instead of other, the other ways because they seem to be blurry. And I think this is clearer uh, just straight into Facebook. Um, but who's to say? Maybe one day I'll try it again back in Restream uh, to go other places. For now, I'll just repost it in several places. Um, so. First off, it's Wednesday. This is the Wednesday, and I always ask, what? What should I share today? What would be best? And they gave me this topic about, um, I keep getting those messages everywhere, um, about what's holding you back. And you feel like you're being held back about something? What's holding you back? And let's find out about it. So one of the things I want to share, I'm going to be reading, because um, I had a great early morning study, and it, it's awesome, it's just awesome, and I was studying in my lessons about the terror barrier and what stops you, and I got the message to go ahead and share this document that's part of my lesson, and then see what y'all think about it, see how you feel about it. Um, it, there's just, it's just, I don't know. It's just awesome. I, I just, it just really hit me today. And each time I do this study and go back over my lessons over and over and over, it always hits you at a different um, awareness. Like, yes, yes, that's good. So what I want to talk to you about <clears throat> is risk taking. Taking a risk, and this is a, a document. Uh, I don't know who wrote it. Maybe Bob did. I'm not sure, but I'm just going to read it to you, and y'all let me know what you think as we go. Risk taking. The dictionary tells us that to risk is to expose oneself to the chance of loss. I suppose that is true. Another piece of literature. Arthur Unknown suggests that to laugh is to risk appearing the fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose feelings is to risk exposing your true self. To place your ideas, your dreams, before a crowd is to risk their loss. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To live is to risk dying. To hope is to risk despair. To try is to risk failure. And I don't know about y'all, but when I read that, it just I just felt like I wanted to cry. It, it's like, why would you, why would you not experience these things over an unknown risk? It, it, and what, what is risk? You know, what, what makes, what is, why, why is that a bad word? So this goes on. You may avoid suffering and sorrow if you don't risk, but you simply cannot learn feel, change, grow, love, or live. The greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing does nothing, thus has nothing. 
Only a person who risks is free. You thought about risk this way? See what I'm saying? It's like a big change happened. I've read this article. I can't tell you how many times. But it's kind of like, it's really coming home. It's really coming home. One of the things I think is helping us bring things closer to home with more feeling is that the frequency across the planet has changed. We're now in this beautiful light time. And all the dark energies that have been here that have filtered things of how we feel and how we look and view things is being removed. And that's why we have all this nonsense going on because all of that is being removed and we're only in this beautiful golden crystalline light age. So we are able to experience more things and to see things clearer. And we'll, we'll notice things like that. So I want to go on and finish reading this article. What causes individuals to shy away from taking a risk, even if it's a low risk, and will give them something they really want? Well, certainly high on most people's list would be fear of loss, failure, and perceived humil humiliation if the loss were to occur. Why would we automatically think that we would fail at something? Why would we automatically think that we would fail at something? Why wouldn't we first try and see? And then if we did fail, learn from that experience and move on. What causes us to have these thoughts of inferiority? We're moving past that. So be prepared. Be ready. This dates back to our little life. And since risk taking is likely not a subject that is taught in school, a person's fear of taking risk might stem, stem back from before they can even remember. When you were a child taking your very first steps, it wasn't uncommon to hear one of your parents or guardians say, be careful, you might fall. Or don't do that, you will, whatever. Though some of this is rhetoric and you don't really pay much attention to it, for some, it begins the pattern of playing it safe. Think of how much better equipped we would be to face life's challenges and succeed if we had repetitive, repetitively heard, take a chance and don't worry about failing because you're going to fail, probably quite often. Failing is an important part of learning. Many of the greatest lessons you'll receive in life are going to come from failing, from your failures. Failing will never make you a failure unless you quit. Unfortunately, very few people heard that when they were small. The vast majority of our population have been mentally programmed to play it safe. So one of the things I thought of as we were going through this about a baby learning to walk. Oh, let me, let me read it, it's right here. A little baby is a natural born risk taker. The baby never considers the consequences of failing when it's trying to walk. Failing is acknowledged as a natural consequence to learning to walk. I guess you could call it a calculated gamble. It is a prerequisite to mastering a mitred of motor skills required to get you on your feet and moving. It's a natural progression in movement. Why then wouldn't we stop to consider that any movement into uncharted territory should be viewed with the same consideration? So what I wanted to say about the baby is when they're learning to walk, we are encouraged parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, the brothers and sisters are like, you can do it. Come on, keep going, keep going. You can do it. Now that we're adults and we're going into something that we need to take a risk on and we always think that we've done something wrong. We think that something is off with us. We start to blame ourselves. We don't re-encourage ourselves like we did when we were learning to walk or to ride a bike. You know, 
keep going, you can do it. And this is one, really one thing I want to get over to all of you. It's like, and to me, to me, I'm, I'm speaking to myself here too. It's like, go out there, take that risk, keep going. You can do it, you can make it. Don't let nothing stop you. We're here for you, keep going. Just like you heard when you were learning to walk. So why is it that we do not see the process of reaching our goals as having steps similar to the ones the baby must take in order to learn to walk. There will be some stumbling and falling in the learning process, but success can only be reached when we are prepared to take those steps, all of them, even the ones where we may fall down. Hi, Bonnie. The real win is the confidence and the experience we acquire, which translates into new opportunities for growth, enjoyment, and expansion in all areas of our life. So let me know, what are you thinking about this so far? Are you feeling it? Are you getting a new aha? Are you getting a way of thinking about risk a little bit differently? I hope so. There is a four letter word that most parents use around their children so frequently that the children pick it up and before too long it is buried in the treasury of their subconscious mind. The four-letter word is can't. This word has done more damage than a lot of other frowned upon four-letter words put together. Can't is a word that paralyzes any constructive progress. It switches your mind into a negative frequency. It is a four-letter word that will open your mind to a never-ending flow of logical practical reasons which will enable you to justify why you are not able to do something you sincerely want to accomplish. Isn't it something? I mean, now you've logiced it and now, now you've got reason. You've got logic. Yes, I know I can't do it because of this. No, you can do it. Bonnie says, um, yes, resonates with me. haven't thought of it this way before. Good, good, me either. This was my early morning, six o'clock. Ooh, look at that. So the only alternative to that four letter word is its polar opposite, I can. I can is far more important than IQ. You don't necessarily have to be very smart to win, but you must be willing. Reaching the goal is not success. Success is moving toward the goal, whatever it is. Taking risk is essential when you want to reach a goal and the purpose of the goal is growth. When you challenge yourself, you bring more of yourself to the surface because there's a lot of you that is considered self that we haven't even discovered yet, but we're going to. We're on early discovery now. If you dream of living your life in a really big way, you may accept risk taking as a very real part of the apprenticeship you must serve. Decide this very moment. There will be no more playing it safe. No more saving it for a rainy day of that type of thinking. When people get caught up in the habit of saving for a rainy day, that is generally what they get, a rainy day. How often have you noticed that? Oh, I need to save for this because something might go wrong. Man, Diane said, was having this type of conversation with a friend recently, coincidence? <laughs> Divinely inspired, I'd say. There are a number of people that limit themselves and refuse to take a risk. They never truly test the strength of their abilities. And I would say their hidden gifts and talents, which are starting to be discovered. You will never get to second base if you keep one foot on first. Too many people go through their entire lives playing their cards close to their chest. They never really step out and bet on the surest thing in the world. You know what that is? 
yourself. Yourself. Really know who you are. Really know who you are. If you hope to accumulate great wealth or achieve high goals, history records that the first few steps have a high degree of risk. You must turn your back on safety and security. To make it big, you must take big risks. You will very likely have to put yourself in a highly vulnerable position. It is also worth remembering you cannot almost take a risk. That doesn't work. Eleanor Roosevelt said, you gain strength, courage, and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. Follow her advice and liberate yourself from the crippling emotional state of fear and enter into a world of freedom. So that's what that article said. And then I had some other points that came through. And I made notes of them because I know I forget them. So about risk taking. There is no failing to take a risk. It's only growth. So each day you will hit that wall of fear, but you will grow each time you break through it. We have always heard and justified our behavior by convincing ourselves it's better to be safe than sorry. And the truth is, it is not better to be safe than sorry. That is a myth that's been perpetuated by parents and guardians for centuries. So it's time we change that. Don't you agree? Fear and growth go hand in hand. When you courageously face the thing you fear, you automatically experience growth you have been seeking. Do not permit old conditioning to prevent you from performing new acts. New acts in an efficient and effective manner are from enjoying that which is your birthright. Start to think of risk as something exciting intriguing and fun. Again, it's like learning to ride a bike. You have to just keep adjusting and balancing how you do it and it finally happens. You succeeded. So instead of asking yourself, now this is interesting, pay attention. Instead of asking yourself if you are worthy of anything, your goal, the project, to carry out this idea we always ask, am I worthy? Instead, ask yourself if this project, our goal, our thing is worthy of you. That gives me chills. Is it worthy of you? You are a spark of the divine. Know who you are. You are a divine being in human form. Right, Diane? I love your post, by the way. But we constantly forget that. So I'm going to constantly remind you. I forget it. It's a reminder for me, too. We get wrapped up in stuff. And then ask yourself, is your life, the life you're all wrapped up in right now, is your life worthy of you. You're still that divine being. You have this gift of a body. So live today and each day to the fullest. Why let the word risk stop you? Let it energize you. Fear is a false belief. Get into the fear of it. Just burst right through that. Be there. Be in the risk of it. You will be happily surprised because you will discover that infinite energy of the divine, of source, that's always with you and part of you, big part of you, 
will move you forward past fear with love. One thing also I taught, I thought, when I was getting this information, I heard the song ABBA, Take a Chance on Me. Take a chance, take a chance on me. Na, na, na. Remember that song? Well, that would be risk. That would be risk. Take a chance on me. Because that is awesome. And the other thing I thought of was we learn in our teachings and in our trainings from Maxwell Maltz that there is a governor or a control on some cars that are company cars that won't let you go over so many a certain speed. We've had a had a thermostat control a governor on our own lives and a lot of us instead of going to the thermostat to try to change it so we can think different and be different we go to the thermometer and try to change that. It's like looking in the mirror and fixing the image on the glass in the mirror instead of on you. So I had this visual of a thermometer, write the word risk on it, adjust it. If you are living and being in a home ha, home ha situation, you have something you really need to change, get that visual of that uh, thermostat and switch that risk up to high. Take a jump in the deep end. You got this. You got this. So that's what I got for us for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I love ABBA too. I had another song this morning about here comes the sun. Da 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 da. Here comes the sun. I always get songs in my head. And it's like, oh, yeah, I don't sing worth nothing. But, and then right behind that was when, I, when Spirit said, talk about this. Get everyone to get past fear because it's not helping the collective consciousness because they are divine beings. They need to send forth love and excitement. You know, it's just like, and knowing who you are. Stop hiding. It, there's nothing that's going to hurt you or stop you unless you, it's nothing. You don't die unless it's your time to go. And you may not always agree with that. Or what others that you've heard have gone. But that's not about you and it's not up to you. You take care of you. And then the energy all around you takes care of the spaces around you. All right, I won't get on all that. But I like the ABBA song, Take a Chance. Take a chance on me. So, yay, Debbie, thank you. I'm so glad that Spirit led me to this. And I just want to say, you know, if you want more about this topic, I'm going to do a little shameless plug. I think I can post in here a link that you can book a call with me. But I also want to tell you that I'm working on and almost finished with two new programs. And I got a download for the intro for the programs this morning. And if you want to hang around just a second, let me find it. I'll share it with you because I just thought this is so great. It's not ready yet, but it's coming. They're both coming. So this is what this is what I heard to put down. And it goes in line with this. We are experiencing a change on our planet. We are in the age of a new earth, crystalline time of the golden age, full of light, love, joy, and manifestation. Right now, we are still going through the clearing out and cleaning up process of a lot of the old energies that have held humanity back for eons, actually billions of years. However, at this time, we, we are changing. We get to learn how to be, act, and respond differently using the beautiful restored energies of our new earth, and those same energies are being restored us. Sound great? There's more. I have been guided to create two new courses, Develop Your Inner Magic and Tuning In, Mastering the Art of Listening to Spirit to help us welcome, engage in, and recognize some of these new energies and how we can change from what we were before to what and how we truly are becoming now 
as we move into our true divineness. And then it's just like, then it's my invite you to um, my first course of about learn more about yourself, your magic, and all the energies that we deal with on a one on one daily basis, discovering your inner magic which is to be a six-week self-paced online course where you begin to understand the unique gifts and abilities that make you extraordinary. And that's all they've given me so far. But I thought, okay, this goes along with taking a risk, busting out of fear. It's like pfft, fear, <laughs> risk. You got this. Awesome. Okay, uh, we did 30 minutes today. I'm excited. Are you guys excited? I'd love to hear from you if you are. Diane, thank you for these thoughts. It will just reaffirm my energy is going for Yes, perfect. Yes, Bonnie, you got this. I love it. Okay, everyone. Thanks for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed this about risk-taking. It's no longer a bad four-letter word. You can do it. It's for you. It's, it's built in for you. So you can just soar. I love everyone. Talk to you soon. Thank you, Bonnie. I'm excited about the birth of these new programs, too. We're still developing that. So, and I sent out a questionnaire if y'all get a chance to answer some of those questions, if you can. If not, I'll just keep listening and keep going. <laughs> Bye for now, everyone. Thank you.